Hi, my name's Brian. I'm a chemist and I'm a home brewer here in Boston. So I posted a video showing my, my home brew system maybe about a year ago when I had just set it up. And I made the video just so I could show my friends what I've been working on. But it turned out that a lot of people viewed the video and had a lot of really nice things to say and lots of questions and a lot of requests to make update videos about the current state of the system. It's, I think we all know that home brewers are incredibly interesting and supportive people in general, and it was amazing to see from this video people all over the world uh, just commenting and asking questions and giving suggestions, and just it was, it was really cool. So it motivated me to try to put together another video to show some updates, and also to open up for requests for other video topics about my system, because I have a pretty unique situation here, and I've kind of troubleshot a lot of different things that may be relevant to other people. Um, and also to ask you all for comments of, of what you think I could do to improve my system, because of course that's what we're always trying to do. Alright, so a little bit about my situation and the constraints that are put onto my system. So like I mentioned, I live in Boston, in the city, so in an urban environment there's not a lot of extra space to set up a really elaborate brewery, so everything has to fit together absolutely perfectly. So I managed to convince my wife to allow me to have this space on the top of our washer and dryer in our kitchen. So that gives me a footprint of maybe 4 feet by 8 feet and not a whole lot of headroom. So I can't build some sort of elaborate tiered system, which means I have to use pumps uh, for lots of different components of the system. It also means, because I'm indoors, I have to use electricity. We can have propane indoors. And I kind of wanted to try to build an electric system anyway because no one wants to stand outside the middle of Boston in the winter to brew beer. Alright, so if anyone's curious as to how I did convince my wife to allow me to have the space in the kitchen, um, and this is a good lesson for anyone, uh, for if you have a spouse like mine who maybe doesn't like beer and you wanted to convince them to allow you to use not only lots of your time but also energy and of course money to build an elaborate brewery, uh, one thing that I found that turned out to be a great benefit anyway is that if you're going to build a herm system into your brewery, that you can easily adapt that to also be a highly controlled, uh, amazing sous vide cooker. So I keep it hooked up whenever I'm not brewing as kind of the sous vide cooking infrastructure. And I'll probably put a video together on that just because I think it's cool how well it works out. So then, you know, you just approach your husband or your wife and you say, you know, I want to build this brewery, and they'll say, that's crazy, I can't believe you want to build a brewery, and you say, oh, but actually, I'm going to build you a sous vide cooker, and if you don't know what sous vide cooking is, just look it up online, it's incredible, we cook well, all of our meat now, just about in the sous vide cooker, you know, best steaks you ever had, chicken, fish, it's just amazing, we actually did our Thanksgiving, we did two entire Thanksgiving turkeys last year for Thanksgiving in the sous vide cooker. You know, if you have any requests for videos when I, after I walk you through the system, you want to hear more about an individual part, um, you know, just write, write a comment and ask about it, and then um, if there's enough requests, then I'll, I'll do videos about, you know, individual components in a lot more detail. The, the two things that people seem to be asking the most about are, one, uh, the PID controller. So I use an Auburn's plug-and-play controller. It works well for sous vide cooking, like I mentioned, it's perfect for the brewery, it's really easy to use. Two different pumps that I use for most things, and one is the stainless steel headed March pump, kind of their workhorse brew pump that people have been using for a long time. And I also have a chugger pump, also with a stainless steel head. Um, so those are kind of the two main pumps that people are thinking about if they want to add pumps to their system. So I have one of each so I can do a video kind of comparing and contrasting uh, those two pumping systems if people were interested. So, you know, chugger versus March pumps and, and what, I, what my recommendation would be after having quite a bit of experience using both of them uh, in the same system. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through the system. Uh, right now, I'm just taking a break, I'm, I'm mashing. So I had about an hour to, to hang out and, and throw a little video together. So while I'm mashing, I'll just walk you through the system. A lot of pieces are the same and I just tweaked a few little things since last time. So, so uh, enjoy. All right, so here is the brewery. So like I said, I'm mashing right now, so I'll, I'll walk through some of the individual little components, but we zoom out here, you can see that it fits pretty nicely into a small kitchen, just right on top of the washer and the dryer. So it's all uh, running away right now. It might be a little bit loud during the video because I have both pumps running, but um, let us walk through it quickly. Here is my 
uh, heat exchanging uh, system. So we just have this hot plate that is being controlled by this PID controller. So we're 0.2 degrees low. I'm shooting for 66 degrees Celsius right now. Um, but basically I have this stainless steel coil that one pump is pumping the, the mash through and you can see stainless steel coil is uh, being recirculated through this water bath that's maintained at constant temperature. So that's what the two pumps are for. This pump is just recirculating the water within the tank to keep it consistent all the way throughout it. And then this is actually pumping out of my mash tun through that coil and back into the mash. So here's my boil kettle. It's not doing anything right now. What I use for this is a big 10 gallon, uh, a 10 gallon pot with a composite bottom that you can use on induction cookers. And before I had one induction cooker, which worked okay, but now I actually have two different 1800 watt induction cookers that it fits between them and they both heat simultaneously and now I can get a pretty decent boil uh, out of the system. And again, it's also wrapped to keep, uh, with the insulation to keep as much heat as possible in. So yeah, so this is the system. It's pretty simple. It's uh, pretty efficient. Uh, didn't talk about it, but there's my uh, Chillzilla little um, counterflow chiller at the end for cooling everything off, and you can ask questions about that later. So feel free to ask questions, uh, video requests, whatever, whatever you want to know. If you have any suggestions on how to make this better, especially if you have ideas for uh, my recirculating system and something to to kind of distribute the water nice and evenly, but. But yeah, this is it. Feel free to ask questions. Thanks.